Decatur High School. Mark Meese here, uh, counselor, been working as a counselor, as a crisis counselor, behavior specialist. So I'm here to talk to you today about conflict management because we know in high school uh, people have conflicts. If you watch adults, we have conflicts. So I want to talk a little bit uh, and share with you what I've learned over the years as far as being able to resolve some issues within my own life or within the lives of people around me. When we talk about a conflict, we talk about finding solutions. And so I'd like to encourage you to have a focused conflict resolution, which basically focused, F-O-C-U-S-E-D, is feelings or cognition, understanding yourself, and then evaluating and self-determinating what it is that you're going to do about the pre presentation of conflict in your own life. Conflict management, we talk about it's really as easy as one, two, three. A very cognitive, with your mind, some of the things that we talk about are this. One, there's an event or an action. In life, everywhere we go, something happens. Someone says something, we see things. So there are all these things, such as she called me a bad name, or oh, he said he loved me, and they said things about me on social media. She encourages me every day you find that many of these things are positive or negative depending on what we think about it. But there's events every day. We know this, so the question is, what do I think about this? That is where our mind is created and making us create these ideas and decisions. So my mind says, oh, she said that, I hate her. Oh, he said he loved me. Girls are like, oh, I love him too. So all of these things and thoughts that we think about the event then start going through our minds. She's my best friend. Or, oh, you know, I see pizza. Pizza's awesome. I love it. Our thoughts about it create then the emotional side of things. So the third part is emotion is created. We have an event, we think about it, and then we have our emotions where, oh, I met at her and I can't stand it and this is wonderful and I'm so sad. All of these things that happen then create the emotion that we use to drive us into making decisions. The concern is when many of us, people say, I have anger issues. Well, you know what, we all do, don't we? But here's the thing, none of us have anger issues. Like I tell my son and my dad told me, be as angry as you want to be. There's no problem with being, anger, being angry, but herein lies the problem. If I have anger issues, is it really that I have issues with anger. Anger isn't the problem. And there's a lot of literature that goes back for centuries about how to deal with it. My favorite is be angry, but don't sin and don't let the sun go down on your anger. When we talk about these things, it says be as angry as you want to be, but do not create problems for yourself or others. That's basically what it comes down to. We don't have an anger issue. We have a respect issue. The respect issue is created when we decide that I'm going to go beyond myself and belittle myself or others. I love Constance Dombrowski's study on this because what she says is she determines that we all have personal power. I like that, don't you? The idea of having power. But here's how it's determined. It's determined by my ability to get what I want without taking dignity or respect away from myself and others. So I'm included and others are included. And her work for the Institute for Effective Skill Development talks a lot about this. And what I like about it is she says we all have invitations to be angry. We don't have to accept them. Much like parties or things or classes, we make choices on what we accept and what we don't. So every day and everything we have, we choose the invitations we want to take, but we also choose the invitations we give others to be angry, to love us, to be encouraged, we can choose and accept or reject the invitations that others send, and they can do the same. Nothing makes me angry. That's the key thing you hear. This made me, nothing makes us. I must accept the invitation and think in my mind that I'm going to be angry or sad or mad. But I make the choice. If I respond to everyone else, they're the ones who control me. That's not what I want. So we've got a fingertip solution to conflict. We have five fingers. I want to encourage you to recognize that the majority of conflict is settled when we do these things. One is the people that are involved. 
Now, if I'm upset, and we're saying conflict happens, and that's not a bad thing, it creates a lot of neat programs, a lot of great relationships, but one, people speak only to those involved in a way to resolve the conflict and restore relationships. If your goal is not to restore the anger, the, restore the relationship, then yes, your anger is taking control. The place that we do this, discuss in person with that other. Go to that person to resolve this. Not on social media, not to your friends, not to your parents, not to your family, not to anyone, unless there's physical or other things that go beyond just words. The other thing is the purpose. What is my purpose for this? If my purpose is just to get someone in trouble, I'm not really there to resolve the conflict. I'm there because I chose to be upset and I want to get back at somebody. So you've got to be careful about that. The power plays, here's the thing. You've got control of some things and there's some very powerful things you can do. One is forgiveness. I can, can offer that to someone even if they don't ask for it. The other is I own my own story. I'm the only one that can share my story, but I can't tell someone else's. So if I'm just saying, well, they're just this, and they're just like that, and they don't care, I don't need to tell their story. I tell mine. I can share how I feel about it, and I can share what I'm going to do about it. And the other thing is when you're looking, and you try and give it a six. If you're, there's a conflict, and you're saying, hey, I want you to give me a 10 out of 10 on something. You've got to agree 100%. The goal is, hey, if we're working on something, can we at least both give it a six and say, this is going to have a positive outcome? If they're unwilling to do that, you're not going to restore the relationship. You've got to just restore yourself. But the goal is to try and find common ground. And the other is personal responsibility. It's the one thing most people don't want to talk about because I want to say what they did to me or they said to me instead of recognizing that I'm responsible for myself as well. This is the controlled mindset versus a fixed mindset or a growth mindset. If someone has a fixed mindset, they tend to say, ah, it's just the way I am. Well, that alleviates you from any responsibility, doesn't it? The goal is I have a growth mindset. I can change. I can look at things differently. I can forgive. I can do those things so that there's control on my end. Those are basically five simple things to do to be able to work with others around you. And that doesn't mean the relationship will be restored. It takes two people willing to work at it, particularly when you find some power struggles and power issues. What I found really great is that the next video talks a lot about just bullying in general and the difference between words and harmful actions. So I hope you enjoy this and I look forward to seeing you in a few days. So the strategies that we use, you'll see on this wall, we do a lot of work on breathing with our students. We teach them how to do deep belly breathing by using beanie babies and laying on the floor. Lots of people say there's no way a three-year-old could do that, but you'll see that they, in fact, take to it quite easily. Another area in this classroom is working with kids on impulse control. What does an impulse feel like? This display over here shows how we do that. We do it by teaching simple games like red light, green light, and then switching the rules so that you have to run on red and stop on green. So anything to give kids that little moment of, oh, I've got to stop and think before I act, that's helpful.